the idea is, is that this is the way what's happening to us right now is the way the United States State Department and the intel of the United States, CIA, etc., etc. This is the way that they foment revolution. And they use people like George Soros, who comes and helps destabilize the justice system, which George Soros is doing now. But all of this is part of a plan, and it's a seven-step plan. You have to have somebody who is known as a leader, as a semi-autocratic leader, as somebody who's like, they're going to be Hitler, I'm telling you. Then you have to have an unpopular leader. That person has to be also unpopular. Oh, he's the most unpopular president ever. Do you know his, his approval ratings are about where uh, uh, Barack Obama's approval ratings were at this time in his presidency? It's about the same. Oh, no, he's the most uh, he's he's the most hated of all time, is he? Then the media prepares that there's going to be election fraud and there's going to be a problem. And this autocratic ruler is going to take over. Those are the first three steps. With that in mind, let me give you this. This is from The Washington Post. This is not a drill. The Reichstag is burning. America. For five years, my colleagues and I have taken pains to avoid Nazi comparisons. It's usually hyperbolic and counterproductive to label the right fascists in the way those living on the right reflectively label the left as socialists. But this is no longer a matter of name-calling. With his repeated refusals this week to accept the peaceful transfer of power, the bedrock principle that has sustained American democracy for 228 years. President Trump has put the United States in some ways where Germany was in 1933 when Adolf Hitler used the suspicious burning of the German parliament to turn a democracy into a totalitarian state. Overwrought, you say? Then ask Yale historian Timothy Snyder, a top authority on Nazism and Stalinism. The Reichstag has been on a slow burn since June, he told me. The language Trump uses to talk about Black Lives Matter and the protest, very similar to the language Hitler used, that there's some vague left-wing conspiracy based on the cities, based in the cities that's destroying our country. Trump, as he has done before, has made a villain of a minority group. Trump has made a villain of a minority group. He has sought out once again to fabricate emergencies to justify greater powers for himself. He has proposed postponing elections. He has refused to commit to honoring the results of the election. And now he proposes to embrace violence if he doesn't win. Oh, my gosh. First of all, um, we haven't had a uh, peaceful transfer of power since uh, George W. Bush left office. That was a peaceful transfer of power. That was the way it's supposed to happen. The one from Obama to Trump? No. Obama was using the State Department, the Intel community, the Justice Department. That wasn't a peaceful transfer of power as we now know. They were doing everything they could to sabotage this president and for them to keep their power in shadow government. So don't talk to me about a peaceful transfer of fat power. We haven't had one since 2008. It's important to talk about this, not just as an election, Snyder said. It's an election surrounded by the authoritarian language of a coup d'etat. The opposition has to win the election and it has to win the aftermath of the election. If not... There won't be another normal election for some time, he said. May I ask you, is this a normal election? What we're going through now, is this a normal election? The left has done everything they could to confuse it. They have done everything they can and are still doing everything they can to mess up the voting standards that we all have. Mail-in voting is not standard. It was standard in Washington state. That's it. We didn't have that. We had absentee ballots, but not mail-in voting. And mail-in voting is notoriously wrong. And I will show you those facts in a minute. There won't be another election. But that doesn't have to happen, Snyder said. To avoid it, we voters must turn out in overwhelming numbers to deal Trump a lopsided defeat. 
The military must hold its own. Homeland Security Police must not serve Trump's brown shirts. We as citizens must take to the streets peacefully, but indefinitely, until the will of the people prevails. It's going to be messy. So what he's saying is, get out into the streets after the election. But you're right. If it is lopsided one way or another, if it is just, if, if on election night, it's a blowout, one way or another, we'll know. If it's close, it's going to be tinkered with, with all of the mail-in ballots. But the Electoral College isn't going to matter. Because as long as I can scoop up all kinds of votes, you say votes don't matter in California. Oh, yeah, they do matter in California because the popular vote is going to be used if he wins the Electoral College. It's going to be messy. He seems pretty sure he won't win in the election. He just doesn't want to leave office. (laughs) To have authoritarian's instinct, instinct, he has to stay in power or go to prison. Now prison. It's abundantly clear that Trump plans to fabricate an election emergency. This is incredible, especially when you watch tomorrow night's special on my Wednesday night special, where we are going to show you their actual transcripts, their actual own words of what they are planning for the election. First, he claimed mail-in balloting. A tried and true system is fraudulent. It's not tried and true. It's the furthest from it. From it. Now his supporters are trying to harass in-person voters. Did you notice about the woman who ran over the Trump people this weekend? Oh, yeah, that's right. The New York Times, uh, uh, they heard about it. They reported it yesterday, finally. Uh, but they didn't report that she was a Democrat and she was trying to Trump uh, 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 roll over Trump voters. But other than that, they got the story. When Virginia's early voting opened this week, Trump supporters descended on a polling station, waving Trump signs and flags, chanting and forming a gauntlet through which voters had to walk. Oh, my gosh. I've never had to do that with the other side. Let's be clear. There is only one political party in American politics embracing violence. Yes, that's true. Wouldn't you say, Stu? One party is embracing violence? Yeah, I mean, it does seem like there's a lot of elements. There is only one side. This is according to the Washington Post. Mm -hmm. There is only one side refusing to denounce all political violence. That's a second statement. That's blatantly. The the Democrats blatantly will not call out Antifa by name. There is only one side talking about bringing guns to the polls. I haven't even heard that. One side attempting to turn federal law enforcement officials into an arm of a political party. I think that's true as well. And Trump is trying to use law enforcement to revive tactics historically used to bully voters of color from voting. Tactics not seen in 40 years. This is such an outrage. But it all goes, all of it, all of it goes to the colors of revolution. They have to print these things. They have to. But I just want you to know, Trump supporters are not the ones censoring people on social media. David Limbaugh had a great story the other day. They're not the ones threatening their opponent's civil liberties. They're not violating the separations of powers, including through their activist courts and lawless executive orders. They're not demonizing other races as the left is. They're not the ones threatening the integrity of the electoral process. They are. And the left, on the other hand, is promised to stack the Supreme Court add territories to the union to increase its electoral prospects, circumvent the electoral college, obliterate the integrity of the voting process through rampant, unverifiable mail-in ballots and the elimination of voter ID rules. And then, if if that's not good enough, you're a kid until you're 27 when the government has to pay for insurance, but you're you're really an adult and you can vote at the age of 16. Republicans aren't the ones threatening to lawlessly invoke impeachment to to block Trump's lawful Supreme Court nominee. Those are all on the left. Is someone recognizing that? Or are our voices and your voice 
going out into the woods and nobody is hearing it? Are our neighbors hearing this? Do they know the truth? The problem is people are not reading or listening to the other side. And we can say we're very reasonable and we are based in fact, and we are. But your friends are not hearing anything even close to this. So we sound like grand conspiracy theorists, even though we have the facts to back them up. When we say the things like he's not doing that, mail-in balloting is, is fraudulent. It's not tried and true. They don't, they don't hear that. They don't hear in Brooklyn, 25% of all mail-in ballots were ruled invalid during the June Democratic primary. 25% were invalid. That's the Democrats. In a New Jersey special election, 20% of the ballots were thrown out. Four people are being prosecuted for fraud. In a Florida primary, more than 35,000 mail-in ballots were rejected, and over 100,000 ballots were rejected in California. In Pennsylvania, their primary, half of the counties were still counting ballots a week after the election. The story of the discarded military ballots discovered in Pennsylvania, many of them were cast for Trump. There are reports today in Wisconsin, three trays of mail containing absentee ballots found in a ditch. In North Carolina, voters reported receiving two ballots in the mail. Is this sound like something we can trust? Does this sound like tried and true? Your friends aren't hearing those things. Your friends need to start hearing those things with facts. And you can't say, I heard it on Glenn Beck and I don't remember the facts. I wish you could have listened. No, you have to have the facts. And you have to share them with your reasonable friends. Because there is an attempt. And there has been, this is an ongoing attempt to take and totally transformed the United States of America. It started in 2008 when Barack Obama promised it. There was no peaceful transition of power. They went after the president. They fraudulently ginned things up and they knew what they were doing. And it was an inside job that started in the White House and used government agencies, the Justice Department, the uh, the State Department and the intelligence community. And this is their final play, and we have to be ready.